Today we make our way into the southern Serengeti. And Serengeti gets its name from the Maasai word, which translates to endless plains. And it, this hits you straight away as you enter the southern Serengeti. Known in, specifically in the south for its short grass plains, meaning that you can literally see forever. Almost immediately we start to pick up some of the tailing herds of the migration. Seems to be a lot of controversy and, and, and difference in terms of how many actually how many animals are actually in the migration, which range from anything from the conservative figures of one and a half to one point seven million, right up to about four to even four and a half million wildebeest, depending on which stats you read and, and use. That is followed by anything from five hundred thousand to two million zebra and then many other animals following the, the, the migration. The reason for the migration is, is simply a, a source of food. Animals have to keep moving with that many mouths to feed. Grass doesn't last very long. Um, both zebras and wildebeest are grazers. Along with the, the actual migration that everyone comes to see, the wildebeest and the zebras, of course this is a, a dream spot to view the big cats and, and pretty much all your, your carnivores. As we were entering the park, one of our first spectacular sightings was a beautiful cheetah that just sort of walked along the next door to the road. It really is quite a spectacular setting. Serengeti is known for one of the largest lion populations in the world. You can imagine with that many animals wanting to feed, they have to keep moving. So the, the weather pattern puts them into a natural circular motion and basically their whole life they're chasing nice fresh green grass to graze on. And so with global warming being an issue at the moment, the rain path has not been as set as what they were before. You're starting to find the migration stretching out further and further. During the heat of the day, uh, all the animals look to rest. Uh, even your predators are looking for shelter. Short grass plains, by definition, means that there isn't a lot of shade. And so on pretty much all the rocky outcrops, you'll find lions. Uh, we were lucky enough to, to see this on several occasions. Um, the reason for them sitting on these big, bold granites, you, you'd expect it to be hot because they're right out in the sun. You expect the rock to get hot, but it actually offers quite a bit of breeze to get them off the ground and to sit up. They do pick up a breeze and, and they do stay cooler longer up on top of these rocks than what they would if they were lying on the ground. Eventually the rocks do get hot and then you'll see them moving towards the, the shade of the trees or even down off the rocks.
many highlights of the drive was coming across the iconic leopard in the tree, lounging around, ignoring us. It was only after close inspection did we realize that the leopard also had a half-eaten wildebeest in the tree with him, and probably the smallest leopard cub I've ever seen. Uh, really amazing, well tucked away. Um, we could really just make out the outline of the of the little cub and its tail hanging out, which was pretty much the only thing that was exposed. Um, really special, special sighting. camp in the central Serengeti is always a delight to see at the end of the day. For this trip we're spending three nights at Kati Kati. Each camp has the lure of cold beer and hot showers after bouncing around in the vehicle and doing all the wildlife all day. There's nothing like coming back to camp in the evening to watch the sunset, have a cold beer and a hot shower. There's nothing better in life.